Flux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy in Naughty Marietta. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The hearts of America are across the Atlantic tonight, and the prayers of America go with her sons in these hours of destiny. Quite properly, news has the right of way on the air, and this performance of the Lux Radio Theater may be interrupted for important news bulletins. Tonight, we bring you the glorious voices of Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy in Victor Herbert's immortal Naughty Marietta. All the thousands of letters which have asked for these two stars together get the best possible answer in the next 59 minutes. Jeanette and Nelson co-starred in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture, and of all the wholesome entertainment they have given us through the years, I think this was the most successful. With a story of adventure in New Orleans and those unforgettable melodies that have become a part of America itself. You've known them since you were a child. Songs like Our Sweet Mystery of Life and I'm Falling in Love with Someone. You don't have to know the inside workings of the theater to make a guess on what would happen if some Broadway producer hung a sign on his marquee that Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy were starring in Naughty Marietta. Of course, Broadway producers only dream about things like that. But here, thanks to Lux Toilet Soap, it can come true. An ordinary theater might seat 1,500 people. Tonight, the Lux Radio Theater audience totals some 30 million. And so the Broadway production would have to go on for more than, well, 20,000 performances to take care of all of our audience. How long would the play run? Well, the answer seems to be something over 50 years. But the answer to certain problems that start with beauty needs no arithmetic at all. Just Lux toilet soap. And here's curtain time for Naughty Marietta. And the first act, starring Jeanette MacDonald as Marietta and Nelson Eddy as Captain Warrington. France, in the year 1750. To his sprawling estate 100 miles from Paris, the Count d'Altena has just returned from Spain. He strides imperiously down the long corridors of his mansion toward the apartments of his niece, the Countess Marie. The Countess is engaged in a singing lesson, but her uncle is in no mood to be kept waiting. No one told me you would return. I just arrived. Dismiss this man. I wish to speak to you alone. Well, I'll be through with my lesson in a few moments. I said I wish to speak to you. Yes. If you don't mind, Monsieur Gillet. Tomorrow then, madame, at the same hour? Of course. Thank you. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir. Well, uncle? Don Carlos is in Paris. He returned with me from Spain. Well, then you didn't get my letter in Madrid. Your letter? Of course it reached me, but I tell you, Marie, this wedding will take place. Uncle, in everything else, all my life, have I not obeyed you? And you will continue to obey me. But how can you force me into a marriage with that man? He's old. He's, he's horrible. He's... Uncle, I... We've been over this a dozen times. You'll marry Don Carlos next month at Versailles. When the King of France and the King of Spain arrange a marriage, that marriage takes place. I can't go through with it. We'll discuss it no further. Then please remember what I've said. You'll, re you'll remain in your room until you come to your senses. Uncle... Uncle, I beg you. I'm taking you to Paris next week. Don Carlos is most impatient to embrace you. Oh, madame, it is nearly daylight and you haven't closed your eyes. And I won't, Marietta, till I find a way out of this. Poor madame. You seek to avoid a husband and I seek to find one. I pray we're both successful. And to think that at such a time as this I must desert you. Desert me? You forget, madame. In two days, the ship sails for Louisiana. Marietta, of course. And you're giving up your sweetheart in Paris? Madame, we are poor people. He's been called into the army. He has no money to buy his way out. I, I will forget him in the colony. Why didn't you tell me this before? Antoine has tried, madame. He would not let me. And what will you do in Louisiana? The same as the other casket girls shall do. Find a husband. Casket girl? Yes, madame. 
The king has given each of us a casket of gold and a grant of free land in Louisiana. Women are needed there. In exchange for the king's generosity, we have pledged ourselves to accept husbands there as soon as we arrive. Anyone? Anyone. Worthless or not. But at least it will be a new land, madame, and a new life. Marietta, you love your Antoine very much, don't you? Oh, yes. Very much. How much money does he need to remain out of the army? Twenty gold louis, madame. You shall have two hundred. Madame. It's not a gift, Marietta. You will go to Paris to Antoine. I will go to Louisiana. But, madame, how can... I'll take your name. I'll take your clothes. Oh, Marietta, please. Please help me. Well, I'll do anything for you, but if you're found out... Oh, I won't be found out. You're a countess, madame. In Louisiana, you'll have to work while you've never so much as... I to... can sing. Who knows? Maybe there's a theater in New Orleans. Quickly now. Tell me every detail. There must be no slip, Marietta. You and I will leave this house within the hour. <laughs> Ah, oh, good morning, ladies. Good morning. Captain, such a sad thing. Well, why not? I'm a sad man. Ladies, I bring you depressing news. Yes, ladies, it tears my heart to tell you this. In three days, we'll be in New Orleans. In three days, all my pretty girls will leave me. Already my seasickness is gone. I'm not seasick. Just sick of the sea. I'll be sorry to leave the ship, Captain. Yes, my little seagull, I shall miss you. It will be like losing the last touch with home. Oh, you'll forget all about home with a new husband. Yes, and I think I'll marry a soldier. And you, Lisette, you would like a soldier, too? What? And have him getting up in the middle of the night to fight Indians? No soldiers for me, thank you. And you, Marietta... Marietta. Oh, yes? Huh. Girl, you're miles away. Still making music on that piece of paper. The music I have. It's the words. Words? What words? That's just it. I get so far and then I stop. Ah, oh, sweet mystery of life. Could I but find thee? Ah, oh, could I but know the secret of his song? Well, well, go on. That's all there is. Perhaps there never will be more. Marry a musician in Louisiana. Let him worry it out. Marry? <laughs> Not I. I want no man. What? Well, then why did you join us? To see the world? So all I've seen is the ocean. But it's in your contract with the king. You must marry. And if I refuse? Then back to France you go. Back to a prison. Watch. I'll neither marry nor return to France. I know one thing. I'll marry no man either. Unless I love him. Well, listen to her. Listen to who's going to pick and choose. Back home, you never had a chance to marry anyone. But I'm frightened. I'm frightened to death. Oh, she's scared. Uh-uh, you she-devil. Talking to my little fish like that. Sit down, little Julie. I'll have no tears on this ship. Ladies, I, the captain, order you to entertain Julie. Come, sing, sing Julie into fair weather. Marietta, she sings better than all of us. Yeah. I'll bargain with you, Julie. One song for one smile. There. Yeah. That's better. Now, what would you like? Please, the little prayer you sang for us yesterday. King of the earth and sky and sea, guide them upon their way. Gladly we place our trust in thee, Oh, my God. 
Keep the house light, ladies. In two days, we make camp at Breton. In one day more, the marketplace at New Orleans. <laughs> Keep together, ladies. Always together. We camp here only for the night. Here in a swamp? It's dark, Marietta, and I'm a sailor. I like to be near the water. And why do you sailors carry muskets? This is a wilderness, little one. Who knows? Pirates? Indians? <laughs> Stay close to the fire. No harm will come to you. Tomorrow you'll be in New Orleans. To what? Can't you hear? Indians! Indians! Singing Indians. Pirates! They're pirates! To your post, men! Everyone, quick! Captain Duval! Yes? Yes? Soldiers, the whole Duval, they're coming this way. Soldiers? What soldiers? I don't know, Captain. Soldiers in these swamps? Tell the men to hold their fire. Hold your fire! Ahoy there! Who are you? Ahoy there! Who are you? Whoever they are, they're apparently deaf. But neither dumb nor blind. It's plain they can see us. To meet the savage folk is a man who loves a pike. Is a man who loves a pike. Ahoy! Ah, if you keep yelling like that, you'll lose your voice. I never yell. Then why the devil don't you answer me? Yeah, your man is a bad sailor. Didn't you hear? We were singing. There's only one thing we do better. Fight. I'm Captain Duval from France. We seek no fight. We're making camp here for the night. Now, rest easy, Captain, if you can in a swamp. What a place for a camp. Didn't your mother ever tell you about boogeymen? <laughs> we're on our way to New Orleans. You serve the governor, monsieur? The name is Warrington. Captain Richard Warrington. And we serve ourselves. The governor hired us to protect this colony. Mercenaries? Oh, that's one way of putting it, but the... Well, who are the shy ladies, Captain? Creeping there in the shadows. The casket girls. Surely you knew they were coming. That's enough, you tree toads. Any man who wants a wife can pick one tomorrow in New Orleans. Be smart, he won't go to New Orleans. Well, girls, let me have a look at you. You... you villain. We've come all the way over here just to get married. Pay no attention to him, girls. Not now or tomorrow when you see him in New Orleans. And what makes you think I'll be in New Orleans? You said only smart men will stay away. <laughs> Quiet, you. We're standing guard here till morning. Now get to your post. You and your men get some sleep, Captain Duval. As for the girls, I don't particularly care what they do. All right, men. Your post. <laughs> Oh, uh, Captain. What? Um, you'll see us safely to New Orleans, won't you, tomorrow? Yes, of course. I'll get back to the others and go to sleep. I'd rather talk to you. Well, that's understandable. Let's talk. Start answering some questions. Why couldn't you find yourself a husband in France? That's certainly none of your concern. Now, look here, Your Highness. Well, why did you call me that? Well, because your chin reaches for the moon when you're mad, that's all. Suppose I change it to blue eyes. My name is Marietta. You have blue eyes, haven't you? My eyes are green. Well, Blue Eyes, how did you happen to get mixed up in this cargo of raw bone brides? I wanted to get married. Just a poor, lonely milkmaid on a farm, huh? As a matter of fact, I was. Sure, 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 sure. Look at your hands. Uh, well, I... Oh, it's all right, Blue Eyes. None of my business what you were. Say, uh, how'd you like my singing, huh? Well, there's so many peculiar noises in the swamp that oh. I... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yep, I thought I was magnificent, too. Modest little fellow, aren't you? Lady... You're talking to the bellowing bullfrog of the bayous. But don't tell us so. No, I'll leave that for you to do. Uh, by the way, where did you acquire that uh, so-called voice? Oh, I studied for years to be a singer. But then I discovered I wanted more to be a soldier. It pays much better. Then I suggest you forget singing and concentrate on your work. Oh, but I do, I do. And I made a remarkable discovery. You see, if we sing while we march through the swamps, whoever we're after, pirates or Indians, are very likely to hear us. <laughs> That's one way of getting an audience. Yeah, and when they hear us, they run off. And nobody's killed, and the governor rehires us to start looking for them again, and everybody's happy. I see. Then you, you don't spend much time in New Orleans. Well, uh, no, I don't spend much time. Not if I can help it. Besides, those French troops there can't tell a screech owl from a war whoop. They hide from both. But well, then the colony is really blessed with your services, you might say. I did say it. Uh, doesn't your, um, 
uh, your wife object to your being away so much? Wife? Oh, you're paddling up a dry creek, Blue Eyes. Oh, you're not married. No, uh uh-uh. Don't start making plans. Oh, I'm I'm very fond of girls. Devote quite a bit of my spare time to them. But M A R I A A R I A G E is a word I just can't pronounce. You can't spell it either. <laughs> it's, I'd sooner be bitten by a moccasin than kissed by a bride. Feel rather strongly on the subject, don't you? Oh, I don't mind dying, blue eyes, but I'd sure like to avoid a lingering death. Hmm? Ah, there goes that chin up to the moon again. Well, it's a very nice moon. A yeah, very nice chin. You know, I, I, I know a song about the moon. I'm sure you do. Like me to sing it? No. Well, now that you've persuaded me, <clears throat> listen. Tell me kindly, fortune, tell me if my love shall ever faithful be. Tell me truly if my ever grow. note a jewel. Well, what about it? Blue eyes. Oh, so you want to hide, do you? All right, when you're through being coy, I'll still be here. Now, look, where are you? Blue eyes. Blue eyes! Yes, Richard. Ah, go to sleep. <laughs> We're marching this morning. On your feet. Wait, wait. Now what? What about girls? What are the casket girls? She's missing. Uh, Probably off somewhere with one of your sailors. All right, boys. In line. No, no. She disappeared during the night. We can't find her anyplace. Who was it? The little one with the red hair and the blue eyes. Marietta. Marietta? Yes. She's gone? Completely. Gone. You must find her. Oh, no. I'm hired to fight, not to hunt stray kittens. Please, you must. I'm responsible for her safety. To the king himself, I'm responsible. Stop worrying. Come on, men. We're marching to New Orleans. Keep your eyes open for a red-headed kitten with long clothes. Are you fighting from the wildcat? Are you with me wrong or right? Then follow where I go to meet the savage foe.
return for act two of Naughty Marietta. And now, here's our young friend, Sally, looking very pleased about something, too. Mr. Kennedy, I feel like the famous cat that swallowed the canary. What have you been up to, Sally? Well, I went to my young cousin Sue's graduation this afternoon, and was I proud. Sounds as though she graduated with honors. Yes, indeed. Especially the way she looked. Oh, my, Mr. Kennedy, that luxe complexion of hers. So smooth and lovely. Well, of course, Sally, we all know what a luxe complexion does for a girl. But here's why I feel like the fairy godmother in the case. Just a while ago, Sue was really unhappy about her look. So, Cousin Sally gave her a few Hollywood tips. And the most important was active lather facials with Lux Toilet Soap. I told her that screen stars depend on this easy care, and that it would help her, too. Recent tests proved that, Sally. Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time with daily Lux Soap care. Well, Sue found her beauty facials with that creamy, rich lather really did things for her skin. Why, Sally, they're so quick and easy that even a mere man can tell you how it's done. First, cover your face with the Lux Soap lather and work it in thoroughly. Second, rinse with warm water and splash on cold. Third, pat your skin dry with a soft towel. Right, Sally? You get A-plus, Mr. Kennedy. That's the way nine out of ten screen stars do it. They know how kind, gentle Lux Toilet Soap is to delicate skin. Now, Sally... Let me pass on your Hollywood tip to the ladies in our audience who haven't yet tried Lux Toilet Soap. Why not get some of this fine white beauty soap tomorrow? If your dealer is temporarily out of stock, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Hollywood beauty soap is worth waiting for. And now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Naughty Marietta, starring Jeanette MacDonald as Marietta and Nelson Eddy as Captain Warrington. <laughs> Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. The casket girl, the casket girl. What about them? Where are they? The messenger has just arrived from Captain Warrington. The casket girls reach New Orleans within the hour. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. By order of His Excellency, Governor of Louisiana, all accredited men, single and in good health, desirous of taking a wife, assemble you in this marketplace this afternoon at 3 o'clock. To view the casket girls from France. Haughty girls with gold and a grant of land from His Gracious Majesty, King Louis. Haughty girls just who... Just a moment, just a moment. Well, what is it, soldier? What's that? My goodness, you're sure? Oh. Thirty-nine girls with gold and a land grant. Thirty-nine girls. The casket girls have arrived. And all New Orleans has sprung to the marketplace in the wildest demonstration the town has ever seen. It's been an afternoon of unbounded revelry and feasting. The governor himself has insisted upon kissing each of the 39 arrivals. And now, returning to the government house, he finds the 40th in custody of Captain Warrington. Well, you found her, Captain. I knew you would. Sitting on a stump, holding her foot. You'd be tired, too, if you'd walk as far as I had. Oh, undoubtedly, my pretty one. Uh, we must see that you're cared for at once. Uh, what is your name, my dear? Governor, you uh, seem to forget. This girl escaped. Oh, yes. Uh, a flagrant breach of your contract with His Majesty. And what do you have to say for yourself, young woman? Simply that I'm not going to marry anyone. Oh, well, uh, this is very serious business. Let me see your credentials. If they're not correct, I'll... Uh, 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 haven't I seen you somewhere before? Oh, no, no, Your Excellency. I, I'm from Marseille. What is your name? Marietta Franini. That's strange. I was sure that I'd seen you before. The credentials, Governor. Oh, yes, the credentials. Mm -hmm. uh, there's very little use in examining these credentials, Excellency. They're false. Full of lies. What? Oh, my goodness. Now, let me see the name. Marietta Franini. Home, Marseille. Oh, no lies so far. Age? Oh, 23. In good health. Any lies? No, Excellency. It says you're of excellent character and your behavior has always been beyond reproach. That's it. Hmm, that's the lie. My behavior. What? Well, I'm an awful person. I, I, I had three husbands in France. Well, <laughs> really, I... Uh, three... In round numbers. Well, what were you doing among all these sweet girls? You had no business coming here. You're so right, and I'm so bad. Yes. Well, now, don't you take it too much to heart. I'll put you in prison, but it's really a very nice cell, and I'll come to see you every day. Yes, Pa? Oh, yes, my dear. You are going to what with this 
brazen creature? Young woman, you should be ashamed of yourself. And you thought you knew her? I, uh, the, oh, Richard. Yes, Eklund, Get this creature out of here and, and, and do something. Find her a home. Put her in jail, but get her out of here. At once, Eklund. This way, Blue Eyes. No. I said this way, Blue Eyes. <laughs> If I hadn't found you on that stump and arrested you, someone else would have. And right now you'd be in jail instead of with me. You can thank me as soon as you're in a better mood. Why this sudden interest in me, Captain? Well, when I'm on duty, I'll admit I am a loud kind of fellow, but I'm in town now for rest and relaxation. I feel very kindly toward the world. But you made it rather clear that your world doesn't include women. Yeah, but any woman charming enough to acquire three husbands. Oh, I wish my world were full of them. And they all look like you. Oh, I've always done very well with charming women. Sometimes too well. Breaking off, you understand? Well, you'll encounter no difficulty severing this relationship, I assure you. Uh, the way you toss off words like a lady of culture doesn't quite fit in with your milkmaid story, does it? Yeah, but do you no harm to improve your language? And maybe you've been missing a lot of fun. Haven't you ever wanted to be a little more informal like this? <laughs> Let me go. Let me go or I'll call the police. No whisper will do. I'm the police. Then please, please, wherever you are taking me, take me there. But it appears we have arrived. This is it. Rudolfo's. Rudolfo's? Formerly my singing teacher. He also teaches dancing and has a marionette show. Oh? You can trust him. He has eight children. He also has rooms to rent. He also needs a talented girl to help in his show. Oh, that sounds wonderful. So if you can't find one, maybe you'll do. Oh. Shall we, uh, knock? Yes, we shall, uh, knock. My custody, Rodolfo, and I want you to see that she's comfortable here and, of course, available to me any time I should happen by. Of course, Capitan. So little a favor for all you have done for me. And such a lovely girl. Now, you, you do not to sing, not to dance, not anything? Well, I've been... Now, what do you expect? She's not asking any wages, just a home. There'll be plenty she can do, but, but uh, no milking cows. No, uh, no milking cows. Sure, sure. I'm very happy you come to Rudolfo's family. And my, I promise I teach you to sing. If I can teach you the Capitan, I can teach you. Wait, wait, i show you what I mean. Elena! Yes, Papa? No, yes, Papa, come in here. Oh, it's the Captain. Forget the Capitan, remember the song. <laughs> Which song, Papa? My, the song from Napoli. Go, go sing. A single good now. You listen, senorina. Observe the wide open mouth. The breathe in, the breathe out. Now you uh, definitely should learn to sing, little ice cake. It's an added charm. Ice cake, huh? Hmm, charm. Of course, we don't expect you to sing as she does, but... No, you don't, eh? Well... A jewel. Hey, what is this? Oh, oh, I used to appear at the Opera Comique. A senorita, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, an opera singer who milked cows and had three husbands. When did you find time to be lady in waiting to Her Majesty? Oh, I was that too, for three years. Oh, blue eyes. You're very beautiful. You're also the biggest liar I ever met. She's all yours, Rodolfo. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Uh, 
And now about the plans for the new barracks, sir. No, some other time. Oh, good evening, Richard. Your Excellency? Major Bernal. Richard, here is the month's pay for your men, and you'll be happy to know I promised the council this morning you'd leave at once and round up those barataria cutthroats for us. I'll arrange for your supplies, Captain. I'm sorry, sir. We won't be able to break camp for at least another week. You've been here two weeks already. Now, my men need a longer rest. Your men or you? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, What is this? I can answer that, Excellency. Captain Warrington has taken very seriously your placing the casquette girl in his charge. Captain Warrington, I demand an explanation. This is most serious. Oh, uh, you may leave, Major. I'll have this out with him alone. Yes, sir. My boy, this is wonderful. I was wondering how to get in touch with her. Now, where did you nest our little pigeon? Where is she? Well, I... I, uh, uh... I don't know. Oh, come. Haven't I always been good to you? This is no way to treat your poor old governor. You've changed, my boy. You don't know how I've changed. Oh, but you wouldn't begrudge me a chance to see her again, uh, uh, just to apologize for the way I acted. And besides, if you're going away, I want to be sure that she's comfortable in your absence. Gaspard? Who? Who is she? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, there you are, my dear. Yes, here I am. But who is she? Uh, we were just discussing Richard's horse. <laughs> I didn't want her left alone in his absence. Oh, a very sensitive creature, my dear. Uh, a long, slender neck and such withers. Withers? I'll wither you. <laughs> just uh, trot her around, Richard. <laughs> you understand. Yes, do trot her over. I want to see this horse he's got to apologize to. Ah, Marietta, you do wonderful. Such a voice. Ah, bella Tamia. I'll try to do better with the puppets tomorrow. You've been so patient with me, Rudolfo. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, look. No more work now. Uh, maybe you like to go out to get something to eat. Huh? Mm-hmm. I'm starved. Uh, um, is uh, he common for you? I hope so. Oh, that's bad. He's my best friend. You are too. And I say that's bad. Oh, he just talks a lot. He's harmless. That's what they taught to all the others. So many broken hearts he broke. Mm, but not this one, Rodolfo. Hey, just give me time. Oh, Tick. You ready? Oh, hello, Maestro. Go away, bad man. Go away. Where shall I go? If you must break a heart, at least feed a stomach. Goodbye. Still hungry? No. This is wonderful. I'm leaving New Orleans tomorrow. I've got to argue with some gentlemen in Barataria. Oh, when will you be back? Never, maybe. But if you sing loud enough, they'll hear you and hide. Isn't that the theory? Oh, that's just one of my theories. Oh. I've got another about love. I'm bored already. No, I can be persistent. That I know. Now, get a look. Here you are. Yes, I want... Oh, yes. Listen, some news. Our reward. 500 Louis d'Or reward for the apprehension of Marietta Frenini. Oh, oh, yes. 500 Louis d'Or reward. Dick. Stay here. I'll find out what this is all about and be right back. I could tell you myself. By order of the governor. Brian. Yes, Captain. Who's the reward for? Marietta Frenini. She's posing as a casket girl. A ship arrived today at Breton. A courier just rode in with the news. Oh. Hey, listen to me, everybody. I saw the girl today at the marionette show. She's working there. Rudolfo? Yes, if you want that reward, get up there and find her. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! 500 Louis reward! 500 Louis reward! Marietta. He told you? He told me nothing. If there's anything to tell you, you're the one to say it. We've got to get away from here. Oh, there's no use. I can't hide. Quickly, now. I know where there's a boat. We'll get out on the river. Oh, they'll find me sooner or later. Of course, but don't you trust me? You're the only one I can trust. Oh, come on. Sure, man. Hmm? What's the matter, Blue Eyes? Scared? I should be, but I'm not. It's so peaceful here on the river. Well, why so silent? I've been thinking. About me? Perhaps. <laughs> the roundabout way. Well, I'm not a roundabout fellow. So I've noticed. I, I've really been thinking about a melody. Mm, very pretty. Oh, but that little head should be on more serious subjects. My, uh... Shoulder, for example. Please. As you wish. It's just that you're in trouble, Blue Eyes, and I'd like to help. 
500 Louis reward for a little girl from Marseille. Why? You still don't know? All I know is that you're not what you said you are. What do you think I am? You're lost. You're lonely. You're a, well, a meadowlark and a flock of crows, something like that. Who are you? Someone. Just someone? Yes. Someone from somewhere. Someone from somewhere. Huh? As real as life and as unreal as a dream. You make me seem so mysterious. I'm not, really. Aren't you? Mm-mm. Well, I have a very strange feeling I've, I've never felt before. It's a kind of a grinding depression. My heart's acting strangely. It feels rather sore. At least, it gives me that impression. My pulses leap madly without any cause. Believe me, I'm telling you truly. I'm gay without cause, then sad without cause. My spirits are truly unruly. Forget it. Marietta, please believe me. It was more than a song. It was everything in my heart. And I wish I could tell you what's in mine, but I can't. Not now. Why? Because I haven't any right to. I'm confused. I'm tired. I, I'm... A woman. Yes, I think I understand. No, you don't understand. Well, then maybe I will sometime. Yes. Sometime. Dick, please take me ashore. Yeah, but uh, right now? Yes. Where do you want to go? Where I must go? To the governor's office. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille presents Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy in Act Three of Naughty Marietta. And now, two hard-working victory gardeners are ready to go home. Hi, Matt. You want to lift? Don't I, though. Be right with you. Goodness, if I reap what I sowed today, we ought to have a bumper crop. I'm exhausted. I wish John and I didn't have to go out for dinner tonight. If only I had time to rest up an hour or so. Well, I know what I'm going to do the minute I get home. Draw a tub full of warm water and unwrap a nice new cake of Lux. There's something about that creamy Lux soap lather that always makes me feel like new. Screen stars say that, too. They find their complexion soap, Lux toilet soap, makes a truly luxurious beauty bath. In fact, nine out of ten screen stars use Lux toilet soap. Here's what Dorothy L'Amour tells you. An active lather bath with Lux toilet soap gives you a quick pickup, leaves you refreshed. Mm, I love that rich, creamy lather. Leaves skin so fresh and sweet, perfumed with a delightful fragrance. You step out of your Lux soap bath feeling like a million. There's a tip for busy women everywhere. 
Lux Soap's active lather carries away the day's dust and dirt in a twinkling. And most important of all, as screen stars say, A Lux Soap bath protects daintiness, makes you sure of skin that's sweet. Why not try this fragrant white soap for your daily beauty bath? You'll find Lux Toilet Soap thrifty as well as luxurious. It's hard mill. Each satin smooth cake can be used to the last thin sliver. Ask your dealer for Hollywood's beauty soap, Lux Toilet Soap, tomorrow. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We'll have a chat with the Countess and the Captain after the play, but here's the curtain for the third act of Naughty Marietta, starring Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy. <laughs> Gaspard, read it to me. Oh, yes, my dear. The, the courier brought it from the ship. See, signed by the king himself. Read it. You are ordered to find the Countess Daltena immediately and return her to the custody of her uncle. Anyone abetting her further escape shall be considered in treason to me and will be sentenced to death. Louis, king of France. Oh, I feel horrible. And where is the girl? I don't know. <laughs> An hour later, the girl the governor is seeking stands before him. With her is Captain Warrington and the governor's aide, Major Bonnell. Well, well, Major. She has been found, Excellency. This lady is Marietta Fernini. Just a moment. The lady's identity has been neither confirmed nor denied. She can't deny it. Nor can she deny that actually she is the Countess Daltena, a fugitive from France. Marietta. This, is that so terrible? Being a fugitive, no. But a countess? Marietta, you will arrest the Countess as Madame. He would not address her at all. Leave us, both of you. Yes, Sexton. Is that your wish? Please. Yes. I'll be back. My dear, why did you do it? Run away from France and give up the most important marriage of the century. Why talk about it? It's all been settled, hasn't it? I'll be settled in Isles if I don't deliver you to your uncle, the King's mandate. Where is my uncle? He'll arrive tomorrow. He must have found your trail very quickly, my dear, and sailed from France right on your heels. I'll wait here for him, if I may. Excellent. A tomorrow night a ball in your honor. Oh, please, I... Oh, it's nothing at all. Oh, <laughs> another matter. We shall see to it naturally that your uncle never learns what's been <clears throat> uh, going on. Uh, uh, why upset him needlessly? But if I'm not upset, why should it disturb him? I, uh... <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, well, well, of course. But um, uh, in any case, do me the favor of letting them believe that ever since you came here, you have, uh, uh, you, uh, well, uh, uh, well, blast. What could you have been doing? I worked in a marionette theater. Splendid. You worked in a marionette theater. They need never know that I was forced to. They'll never know. Or that you are the man responsible. Exactly. And I'll tell them, oh, no, no. Well, well, well that's not quite the point, you know. I mean, I said, oh. Madame la Comtesse, your apartments are ready. Thank you. Oh, I've been expiring from horror about your experiences. I should have known at once you are no casket girl. Get thought, of course, he's such a man's man. Man's man, yes. Oh, you mentioned apartment. Yes, madame, this way. Francois. Francois! Yes, sir. Come here, quickly. A letter. Write a letter at once to Captain Warrington and deliver it in person. And the contents? The contents? Oh, yes, yes, the contents. Let me see. Uh, yes. uh, Richard, I order you to get out of town immediately. Go to Barataria or, uh, or somewhere, but go. In the name of our long friendship, please obey me. After all, a woman is only a woman, but a countess... Uh, uh, oh, Francois, what is a countess in this case? Uh... A barrel of gunpowder, sir? Uh, yes, yes, uh, but the Countess is two barrels of gunpowder. Please go away for about three months. Madame, they are arriving downstairs already like flies to a plate of honey. <gasps> There's never been a ball like this, not since the colony was founded. You've been most attentive, all of you, lending me your gowns and your jewels. Um... Will, uh, will everyone be here tonight? Everyone of consequence, madame. And the military? Uh, the regular guard, yes. I don't know about Captain Warrington. As a rule, he... <gasps> you wretched girl! Get out of here! Please, I must see her. She knows me. Oh, Julie! Oh, madame, just for a moment. Get back to your kitchen at once. Oh, please, please. I wish to speak to this girl alone, if you don't mind. Come, ladies. Out. Out. Oh, my goodness. Julie, I haven't seen you since we landed. You're married? Oh, yes, madame. To such a wonderful man. And you're happy. Terribly. Mm -hmm. But, Marietta, madame, it's about you. Captain Warrington. What are you trying to say? The governor ordered him to leave New Orleans. But he refuses to go and... 
I just heard. He's coming here tonight, and he's going to come here. Oh, Harry. Oh, come in, Uncle. Did you just arrive? Julie, wait in the bedroom, please. Harry, how could you have done this? Oh. Must we talk about it? You found me, so my little game comes to an end. I've no need to tell you what your conduct has cost me. The humiliation, that ghastly trip. And poor Don Carlos suffered such misery from seasickness. I almost despaired of his life. He survived? Fortunately, yes. Oh. He's, uh, he's here with you? The poor man is still too ill to leave the ship. Doesn't he know I left France to avoid him? Hasn't he any pride? I convinced him your running away was to intrigue him, to make yourself more desirable. It would be wise to let that impression remain. Have you two had time to make your plans? After the ball tonight, we go aboard the ship. We sail at dawn. Dawn? Until that time, all the guards have been instructed not to let you leave the palace grounds. Uncle, you may as well know it now as later. When that boat sails at dawn, I'll not be on it. Haven't you tried my patience enough? This affair of yours with Warrington, I know all about it. If he should try to see you again, I shall regard it as an act of treason. Now, are you ready to come downstairs? Uh, my uh, gloves, they're in the other room. Hurry. Julie. My dad. You heard him? Yes. Help me, Julie. Go to the barracks. Tell Captain Warrington he must not come here. It might cost him his life. You understand? Yes, my dad. Thank you, Julie. I'm ready. That's better. Oh, in case you still want your gloves. They're where you put them down. Here, on your dressing table. Her Grace, the County of the Train of the La Train. His Grace, the County of the Train of the La Train. Oh, Madame la Comtesse, this is a great occasion for New Orleans. Thank you, Madame. My children tell me you have such a divine voice, Countess. <laughs> I'm far better as a puppeteer. Yes, they heard you in Rudolfo. Such a quaint little escapade for a Countess. Come, my dear, your first dance belongs to the governor. I remember everything I've told you. See those guards by the side door? Where the major is? Sure. Those two, Cap? Those two. I don't know what's got into you, Cap, but we'll do whatever you say. I won't be long. I know what's wrong with him. What? He's squirrel baby. Eve. Cap's in love. What are you doing here, Warrington? Oh, accepting an invitation to a ball. Where's your card? Well, it was a verbal invitation. If you go the in there, Warrington, you're as good as... <laughs> well, why not? Guard! Yes, sir? Stand aside. Let Captain Warrington pass. I'm going with him. There's the governor, Captain. I think he'll be interested to know you're here. If you'll excuse me, I'll let him know myself. Excellency. Richard, didn't I tell you? You can't do this to me. Why aren't you at Baratalia? I hate to interrupt your dance, Excellency. Dick, I sent you. She told me, Madame. Richard, answer me. You wanted me to leave town today. The day doesn't end till midnight, Excellency. Oh, if you don't mind, will you hold my hat? The Countess and I have something to discuss. Oh, your hat? Oh, certainly, my boy. Pleasure. Uh, oh, your hat? What? Come back! Richard! Oh! Dick, Dick, you've got to leave at once. Now. That's the only reason I came out here with you. Leave while you can. There's a song you were going to sing me. Remember? Steve, you must go, and I can't stay out here. Why? Just because they're giving a party in honor of your sailing? You know? When does the ship leave? Leave? Well, uh, uh, in two days. Perhaps three. Good. That gives me plenty of time. Time for what? To hear your song. I'll be back tomorrow night. We're camping nearby. I can make it easily. Tomorrow night, yes. Yes, goodbye, Dick. Only for a day. Goodbye. Harry. Oh, yes, Uncle. Major Bernal, is that the man? Yes, Excellency. Arrest him at once. Oh, come, Uncle. Aren't you magnifying something very silly? This, uh, this officer is a friend of mine. He's been of great service to me. I simply asked him here to say goodbye. Ah, oh, don't look so cross, Uncle. My dear, I was just thinking I believe you've come to your senses at last. Shall we go in? Thank you. Oh, Madame la Comtesse, we have all vowed that we can't dance another step until we hear you sing. Please, Madame, have pity on us, provincial. Yes, yes, yes I will sing. I know them now, the words. The words I've been searching for.
are you going? Please, please excuse me. Marietta. Dick, how did you get in here? By your balcony stairway. Oh, but the palace is guarded. Still, I'm here. I heard your song. I had to return. You wouldn't have sung it if you'd ever expected to see me again, would you? No. When are you really sailing? At dawn. Why didn't you tell me? Because you'd try to stop them from taking me. They'd call it treason. Look at me. You don't want to sail on that ship, do you? You're all I ever want. All there is. Well, that's it, then. Here, your cloak. We're leaving. I got myself in, and I can get you out. Dick, it's no use. Wherever we go, they'll find us again. Not where we're going. There are places the French have never seen, far away to the west. They'll never find us. Hurry now. Down these steps. You there. Halt. Halt. We're fired. Guards. Yes, the guards. You got them? It's Captain Warrington, all right, sir. And the county. A thousand pardons, madame. But your uncle was suspicious. He gave me the orders himself. Guards, escort your two prisoners at once to the governor's office. Yes, sir. Relax, Jeff. Work fine. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Look in the bushes. The major's guards. A tap on the head and they're sound asleep for the night. <laughs> oh, won't they catch cold without the uniforms? They sure fit us fine, huh, Cap? <laughs> Come on, we've got to get out of here right now. Horses in the woods, Cap. Boats at the river. Think you can run, Countess? In case I haven't mentioned it, I could run after you the rest of my life. Run start now, honey V, and fast. <laughs> Where does the river take us, Dick? We'll reach a mission in a couple of hours. Father DeLille will marry us if you... Well, if you still want to. What do you think? Darling, you are a countess. Yes. Yes, I am. You lived your life in palaces. I've lived mine in wilderness. Don't worry about your uncle. I'll take you wherever you want to go. You'll promise that? I promise. There is a place, Dick. Until now, I have only seen it in a dream. What place? place called home. And as long as I live, it will be where you are. Well, we'll never leave it, darling. Never. Add to the songs of Victor Herbert, the voices of Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy, and the result is an evening we will long remember. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. It's been a very exciting week for me. You see, my husband has his first leap in the Air Force in, in some time, and we celebrate our seventh anniversary Saturday. Mm, our blessings on you both. Thank you. Give our best to Gene. He's a good flyer. <laughs> Uh, with all the camp shows you've been doing, he's lucky to find you home. <laughs> and Nelson, of course, has recently come back from an extensive trip in the Middle East and Mediterranean, entertaining troops there. Oh, it was a great experience, C.B. One of the big thrills was seeing Jeanette in Arabia. I've never been in Arabia in my life. 
In an airplane hangar. No, Nelson. In San Francisco. Well, I was there on a camp tour. No, no, no. I saw your picture. San Francisco in an airplane hangar in Arabia. Oh. <laughs> and on the Gold Coast, they were showing another picture of yours. Rosemary. Oh, yes, Rosemary. Now, let's see. Um, who else starred in that? Oh, it's some tired baritone. <laughs> <laughs> Tired by that time, anyway. I understand you sang 51 concerts for the boys in as many days, Nelson. So you must have done something besides go to the movies. I went to the opera once in Eritrea. Oh, opera's the same anywhere, Nelson. Not in Eritrea. Hmm? In the middle of an aria, the tenor walked off the stage, smoked a cigarette in the wings, and came back and picked up where he left off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the informal touch. Did you sit in the royal box? No, it belonged to an unsuccessful politician named Mussolini. Kind of dusty, though, as if it hadn't been used much lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he stuck that chin out just a little too far. I suppose you traveled pretty light, Nelson. Yes, yeah, just a few extra shirts, some soap and things. Nelson. Here, soap is pronounced Lux. Oh, is there any other kind? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> well, I never make a trip without being sure I have some Lux soap along, Mr. DeMille. Well, Lux couldn't travel in lovely company, Jeanette. <laughs> Oh, by the way, what have you planned for next week? Well, our play is Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's current success, Lost Angel. And that means we'll introduce a new star to this audience, lovely little Margaret O'Brien. And with her, we'll have James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn. Lost Angel is a delightful story of a little girl who fixes up the lives of some of her elders. And as the little girl, you'll hear one of the most talked-about stars of the day, Seven-year-old Margaret O'Brien. And from what I've seen, we can all take lessons from her, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I wish Victor Herbert could have heard this. Tonight, no one needs to give reasons why we should buy war bonds. The reasons are above and beyond logic. They are part of the great heart and faith of America. And they're written like a pillar of fire in the night over France. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you answer the question, have I bought all the war bonds I can? Not all I can afford, but all I can. The fifth war loan began today. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Margaret O'Brien, James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn in Lost Angel. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Cliff Clark as governor, Norman Field as the count, Verna Felton as Madame, and Charles Seal, Ferdinand Mounier, Joe Duval, Jack Mather, Virginia Gregg, Betty Moran, Ann Tobin, Janet Scott, Jay Novello, Deli Ellis, Howard McNear, and Regina Wallace. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Three bells for three great shows. Same time, same station. Listen tomorrow night at Lux Time for George Burns and Gracie Allen and their guest star, Dinah Shore. Listen Wednesday night for Frank Sinatra singing Dancing in the Dark. Lana Turner will be Frank's guest. This time, Lux Time, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the tops in entertainment. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Margaret O'Brien, James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn in Lost Angel. <laughs>